Okay, so welcome to another vlog. Hello, Captain Clumsy here, and I interrupt this video to bring you some breaking news. Well, not in this rag. You may be wondering what the heck's going on with the British motorcycle industry? What's going on in the rest of the world? What is the bigger picture? Why are dealerships closing? What's happening with companies like BSA? Will they continue? Well, hopefully I'll be able to clear some of those things up in this video, but I may be asking more questions than I can answer. Starting with the UK, uh, there has been a spate of high profile dealer closures in recent months, notably the Completely Motorcycles Group, but uh, also Harley Davidson Triumph, BMW, etc. However, dealership closures is not new. Uh, sales figures are also initially look quite disappointing with a 14% uh, down in September, but overall the year minus 3.8%. There is also some economic uncertainty with a new government in and a budget just announced which will affect uh, cost of employing people, high cost of borrowing and so forth. However, a recent article in Motorcycle News, an industry spokesman, uh, described the sales as actually being more than the last pre-pandemic year, which was 2019. So overall, more robust than you might think. So what is the situation with BSA? So there's been initial uh, problems such as the headlamp cracking and uh, the cutting out. There have been some reports that dealers have dropped the brand. And more recently, there's there been this widely reported uh, episode where uh, an, an owner went to several dealers, couldn't get a trade in. So what is the reason for that? Well, I think there are easily explainable reasons for dealers not wanting to take trade-ins at this time. The market is oversaturated. They're in a high-risk situation. Their margins are wafer thin. They just don't want to take on any risk. And I suspect, in actual fact, uh, if you uh, talk sensibly to a dealer, you will get a deal if trading is what you want to do. Now, despite the negativity in actual fact, the uh, one of the bright areas in the UK sales picture has been the modern classic sector, which the BSA is slap bang in the middle of. And when you examine the sales figures a little bit more closely, you will actually come across something very surprising, and that is the BSA Gold Star actually outsold bikes like the Honda CB500X, the uh, Triumph 660 Ad Adventure and the Yamaha MT-07. All are well-regarded machines that sell well. So, yes, victory for BSA there. They're not selling as badly as some people would have you believe. So who and what are BSA? Well, actually, they're not the small company that many people perceive them to be, and certainly not as one uh, misguided troll on my channel commented, cheap Chinese knockoff, it was only a badge of engineering exercise. No, they're uh, part of a group called Classic Legends, which in turn is wholly owned by Mahindra Group. Now, Mahindra are a ginormous company. Their turnover, and I'll pop up some graphics, uh, was 10 billion US dollars equivalent. Uh, they make huge amounts of things. They are a very well established company and they're part of the Indian market. And that is doing exceptionally well currently. India are one of the two big players in the world motorcycle market, both domestically in, and in terms of manufacture. But by contrast, the Indian market is forging ahead and the Chinese are having some major problems. I think that is governmental in China. They've recently had a policy shift, so that's affected particularly the EV market. But overall, EV sales are actually going ahead, whereas in the UK, they're dropping considerably. I think there is a needs to be a sort of a readjustment because what is happening in uh, places like uh, China, India and other parts of the world is are that uh, motorcycles are used primarily for work and uh, commuting purposes and are a necessity. Whereas in the West, in the UK, in the US, in Germany, Northern Europe, they're um, a, purely a leisure activity. So what are Mahindra doing in India and also in Europe, bear in mind, Mahindra also owned Jawa Motorcycles and the French Peugeot Motorcycles brand. So BSA is one of a portfolio of three. So looking first of all at the subcontinental market, 
you can see that there is now a dealership network that's been established. They were launched on August the 16th. They have also established uh, European dealers in quite a wide range of uh, countries from Spain, France, Germany and particularly Turkey, which is surprisingly the largest European market for two wheelers. And finally, to put it all into perspective, here's a graph drawn up by yours truly, so I don't claim this to be 100% accurate, but it gives a um, relative view of the size of the UK motorcycle market in comparison with that and other parts of the world. So basically tiny, mis minuscule, uh, inconsequential generally speaking. So bear that in mind when we talk about all the other things going on that might be impacting on your choice of a motorcycle and whether you sell or buy or just keep the money in your pocket at the present time. Let's talk about some UK specific issues and one of them is the demographics of the uh, rider group which are mainly older such as myself. Younger riders aren't being attracted as much partly due to difficulty of uh, accessing a motorcycle license and the cost of things like insurance, finance and so forth. Then there's the lack of government support for powered two-wheelers or even the EV sector. So uh, economically, they don't seem to be very interested, which uh, leaves us somewhat adrift, given that there are some big problems on the horizon to be addressed. And I think um, if you also look at the structure of the motorcycle market, there's uh, definitely a polarisation going towards part of the uh, lower end becomes occupied by companies like Royal Enfield and so forth, including BSA and maybe the Chinese manufacturers. At the top end, you've got companies like, say, Triumph, Harley Davidson, who are exploiting the wealth of the older riders. But uh, what about people who want to occupy the middle ground? That's a good question, isn't it? So that's about it for this uh, little examination of the UK and world motorcycle market and particularly BSA's position within that overall. Well, I'll turn you over to Captain Clumsy in the studio for the final thoughts. But before that, can I just remind you to tickle the like bell, comment, subscribe and keep coming come back for more. Hello, Captain Clumsy again. And uh, to sum up, how are things going for the motorcycle industry in the UK and for BSA in particular? Well, I think overall, not that bad. There are some ongoing problems with economic conditions, lack of government uh, initiatives and their indifference to the powered two-wheeler market. But there are also opportunities. Uh, there are worries about demographics. There are worries about lack of incentive for young people to get a motorcycle and the cost of training, etc. But those are givens and we know about them. I think there is a slow revolution in the, in the UK motorcycle market towards lower price machines. However, there are still people who can afford the expensive ones. But I'm not one of them. Are you? I don't know. Put in the comments what you think. I'd like to hear your opinions on all these sort of things. But I would say be reassured for now. Longer term, I don't know.